There's several times in which we didn't know whether we were going to make it or whether we not. Uh, and I'm sure in many respects, the people that have cared for me, the people who have uh, looked after me, and the people who have prayed for me and had my best interests at heart are probably responsible for me being here today. My family has been tremendous in taking care of me, looking after, and uh, when I was where I couldn't even feed myself, my family would come in and feed me. And uh, it started back the 15th of August and it came upon me very suddenly. I left Leon, Iowa in an ambulance thinking I didn't need to go any place in an ambulance, that I could go in the car and do well. And the doctor there said, if you were my dad, you would go in the ambulance. She said, in fact, you are going in the ambulance. And I felt real good. I got to uh, Des Moines, and I remember them pulling into the hospital and closing the garage door. And that's the last thing I remember for about two weeks. Uh, I was in tremendous pain, and I know that some of the pain was the control of some of the pain caused me to have some really bad times. But the thing that the thing that really stayed with me was the fact that God loved me and I didn't dare I didn't worry about dying. If that's what was ahead of me, I felt blessed to be able to look at it that way. Then here come the different ones from around the church. I had people there from Des Moines. I had people there, of course, from my own congregation. And I had people from the Bloomington congregation. And those prayers were invaluable to me. They meant so much. Uh, just one example uh, of the prayer that was asked for me was my former partner, Stuart Silver, came he and Melissa, and I asked to, uh, if it'd be all right, they'd say a prayer for me. Stuart asked this, and I said, you bet. And Melissa said, can I ask a prayer for you? And I never heard a better heartfelt prayer in all the time I was in the hospital. And I heard some good ones from a lot of people, but Melissa's was very good, and it was so heartfelt that she really, I knew she cared uh, for me. I prayed to the Lord at times to let me die. I was in awful pain when this first started to happen, and it was almost unbearable. And I prayed for the Lord to let me die. And then I felt like that was selfish. And Doris and I just uh, finished 65 years of marriage on Thursday, uh, the 12th, and I felt like that would be unfair because she and my family wanted me to live so bad, but there was times I didn't want to live. And I was thankful that I believed in God and that I would have no trouble accepting that. I have no idea how many people prayed for me. I heard from people all over the country, uh, people that, uh, I guess with our modern technology, then a lot of people know a lot of things that they wouldn't otherwise. And my family and my friends from all over, I heard from one man who was, his name was Bill McCullough, and the only reason that's important is because with a name like McElroy, we sit next to one another in school, in vet school. Uh, and because of modern technology, he knew about this. And so there was a lot of people that knew about it. A lot of people I hadn't contacted for a long while. And I enjoyed very much visiting with them uh, as I got better and able to do it.
Um, Stu Sherman and I, you remember, we reminded you last week, along with Evelyn, came to visit you, and you did not look very good at all, but you had some clear moments in which, during one of those moments, you said that the Lamoni congregation had been on your mind, and I thought that was the darndest thing to say uh, that, that you were thinking of other people in the midst of a battle for your life. Can you remember what you were thinking? Yes, I remember what I was thinking. I was thinking that our congregation is not as strong as I would like it to be. That anybody that need them would have them. And that's not really what I mean. I, I, we, we fail, and I have failed, to, uh, to be there to help people. Uh, I'm not sure really what I think we need. And I guess if I did, uh, I don't have trouble keeping vocal about things like this. I'd probably say that. Yeah. But... But there's more, we, so much more we need to do. And I thought, my goodness, all those people that did for me. And we need to do that for everyone. We need to, uh, we need to let people know we're there to do for them. Well, I'll tell you what I did. Uh, I tried very hard to, uh, uh, and at times it wasn't possible because of the pain I was in and, and the problems I had. But I tried very hard to treat those people that were caring for me as good as I possibly could. Uh, just because I felt like that's all I could do at that point in time. Uh, and, and I know there's more I can do uh, if it happens to be that that works out for me. But there's so much more that we all can do. Bill, as a member of the priesthood, what would you say to the Everett and the Persaw family? They're, they're dealing with a lot of despair. You've come through dealing with a lot of despair in the last two months in your own life. What would you say to them? God loves you. Uh, what, what's in store for them? We don't know. Uh, we have a good idea, but it's not because there's any lack of God's love for them or any other family. It's part of life, and sometimes we don't know why or what, but we do know, and I, I honestly, I believe this wholeheartedly, that God always loves you, and I have no concern about that in my life at all. Well, if I wasn't going to be as successful in overcoming this as I have been, I would want them to leave with, for me to leave them with the idea that God loves them very much. They love everyone. And in that respect, they can do more for one another 